This oyster has helped humans survive for centuries. From its water filtering properties to its tight-lipped mysteries. This rock looking thing, how do we get into it? From the fastest shuckers to how the heck do you shuck it? You <gasps> did it. The pop. Yeah. The only thing harder than breaking into the shell, breaking into the industry. I'm the only oyster farm on the North Shore. And a big debate. In the winter time, they're a lot sweeter. Is a winter oyster really better? I think yes. they're, they're better, yeah. Yes, it is true. From repurposing. They are perfectly imperfect. To the purpose of it all. Tonight, we dig into a world of oyster stories. This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. We're looking at a whole ecosystem that's thriving because there's this little shell, this slimy creature at the bottom of the sea that just exists. The oldest oyster fossils date back more than 150 million years. Fast forward a few hundred millennia here in New England, the oyster has been providing sustenance for what seems like forever. By the year 1850, Boston had 69 oyster houses, and oyster peddlers sold the bivalves door to door. Eventually, depleted oyster beds gave birth to a new generation of shellfish cultivation. The Cotuit Oyster Company would help lead the way in oyster seeding. And it was Hotuit that really proved that aquaculture could work, that there was good money in it. Though hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, in 2019, oyster farms represented a $30 million industry here in Massachusetts. The water quality is, is our lifesaver. It's low tide here on the shore of Cape Cod's Pomponesset Bay. The cool air carries the crisp scent of seawater. For Buddy Pocknett, it is a quiet time of reflection when the winter winds bring voices from the past. You start thinking about, you know, your, your past relatives and past uncles that fish there. The Wampanoag tribe, or people of first light, have made their living from the land and sea in this region for well more than 10,000 years, settling on the shores of Cape Cod in part for the bounty of mollusks. Shellfishing to our tribe and to our people is sustain ourselves. That's how we live. That overabundance, of course, dwindled over those many years for many reasons. But even in the last few decades, Buddy says multiple factors have led to a steady decline in the natural shellfish population. When I was a kid, you could come down here and dig steamers and dig a hole that round and get a whole pack, a whole 15 pounds. He goes back to those voices on the shore, the ones he credits for lessons in honoring the gifts of the sea. To only take what I need. Overfishing, he says, is one problem. The second factor Buddy believes is the exchange of wealth in the bay for the wealth on the coast. Every time we put a creosote log in there to create a dock for their boat, all around that, it's like 15 feet of water at the bottom that dies. It bounces back, but it bounces back 10 years. And oysters are a powerful tool in combating water quality issues. Just one oyster can clean up to 50 gallons of water every single day. It's very important for the water quality uh, for everybody, not just the tribe. Reviving the water and the land inspired Buddy's father, Vernon, to launch the First Light Shellfish Farm in 2009 with a grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. In 2023, the Wampanoag tribe received a $1.1 million grant from the U.S. government to revive the farm and its 12 acres in Pomponesset Bay. From building and recycling their own oyster beds on the farm to growing their numbers in the sea. We're going to be long gone, and this problem's still going to be here. So I'm going to do the best I can on my watch to try to get it out there that people are aware of what is happening to their water. Mm. 
And First Light Farm hopes to expand their restoration and production efforts this season, and they're in the process of building a fish market in Mashpee. Good for them. And back to Virginia Schaefer, the journalist we spoke with at the beginning of the piece. She says that back in the 1950s, some Dutch scientists were experimenting with an oyster up in Maine. Didn't work. They just dumped them in the waters off the coast of Maine. Well, those oysters ended up working their way down the coast. You can still find them today off Castle Island in Boston. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, next, oysters in an unlikely place.